take a break and listen to the stories and poems written by people just like you. Prose Poetry Pit Stop. Recharge your day and do your life justice. Tune in for a new episode every Saturday. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to Prose Poetry Pit Stop. I am your host, Justice. This is just a little respite from the daily grind of life. All of the poems and stories that you will hear are all original works from my guest. And on today's show, we have Floyd with two L's. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right, Floyd. So can you tell us a little about yourself, where you're from, and how long you've been writing? Well, originally, just as I'm from Australia, I was born and raised in Australia, but I traveled to the UK uh, in my early 20s, back in the 60s. And uh, it, because I wanted to be an actress, and that's what you did in those days, you had to go to London if you wanted to be an actress. And I met this Scottish guy, he was a folk singer, and I married him, and, <laughs> and so I'm still, <laughs> I'm still in the UK. <laughs> Nice, nice. Um, and uh, yeah, how did what? What was the the, the other half of your question? Was um, uh, how long have you been writing? Was that when? When did I? Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, as long as I've you know been able to write. Basically, I started writing little poems when I was a child, just for fun. Although I did uh, one year in boarding school, I was about twelve, and we had to write the weekly letters home. And I wrote my letters home in rhyming couplets six months and uh, got no acknowledgement of this fact from my parents so I gave it mm. up <laughs> but yeah no I've, I've been writing I, I only started publishing last year but I've been writing you know stuff yeah yeah I was I was the same way when I was a kid I would write like little small I actually still have a binder here <laughs> <laughs> with poems that I that I wrote like 20 plus years ago and it would I would write on yeah. anything receipts envelopes anytime an idea popped into my head uh -huh. I was just I was just writing and even waking up in the middle of the night you know just writing so you said you've been writing for yeah. a long time as a child and and you just got just started publishing last year so was there a, a gap between that time where you just stopped writing or weren't writing anything? Or have you always been writing, you know, even without the cheerleading from your parents? Yes. No, no. I've, I've, I've always been writing. But like you, I had a folder. But I didn't start keeping that folder until after I arrived in London. Um, so any, any, you know, I would write ideas for a poem, ideas for a story, and I would maybe expand on it a bit, but I wouldn't do anything with it. And it would only be every now and then as well. So um, over the years, I mean, I've written a couple of plays. I mean, as an actress, I've written stuff to perform. I've written stuff for other people to perform. And about 10 years ago, I started molding the uh, dramatic works that I was writing into verse form. So you wouldn't necessarily know that it was a verse play uh, unless you twigged, you know, some people twigged, you know, but um, I just, I like that discipline of mainly, you know, trying to be Shakespeare and framing it into iambic pentameter. <laughs> but I found it a fabulous, a really great exercise for refining your, your, your language down, you know, condensing it so that it, you get that intensity that you that you that you need uh, for performance and um, and I was writing songs as well because I have this this it seems to work this way that I'll I'll have an idea I'll start writing something I maybe write it just prose first just write my ideas down and then I'll see if I can frame it into a po po poetic structure a form and then if it rhymes I'll set it to music and it's a song so <laughs> that, that, that's that works. pretty much how my, yeah. how my stuff I've done goes. that a few times. I, I've I've done that with a few. I would have like the chorus, so it would be kind of like in in poetry form, and then somehow I would build on it. I I don't know how to write music. 
that's my father. My dad plays music, um, but the poetry aspect, you know, I would write a few words and then I was like, huh, I would just, a tune would just pop in my head. Like that, that flows with this. And then I would try to turn that little chorus, that little blurb into a full on song. So, yeah. So are, is most of your work, is it a lot of, a lot of plays or are you more poetry or songs? What's your, your genre that you just dive into? I'm, I'm, I'm more, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm more poetry at the moment. Uh, I, I've, I've written about three, three plays, I think, over the years. Um, and some, a couple of them have had songs in them. Look, a play with music rather than a musical play, mm. um, if you see what I mean. Yeah. Uh, but the last uh, three, three or four years since I moved to Liverpool and I was looking for a community, you know, to sort of my people, uh, and I discovered two sets, the singer-songwriters who would meet up in open mic sessions, you know, in a pub or a cafe and share their songs, and then the spoken word open mics that I, I started going along to and thinking, hang on, I've got some poems that I've written. I'm, maybe I can, you know, share those. And then that got me writing more poetry. Mm. Um, so that by the end of last year, well, the middle of last year in lockdown, looking for things to do, I thought, well, I'd, I had a show that was supposed to go on tour uh, in March of last year. And uh, that uh, wasn't going to happen. So I had all this material. And, and I thought, well, oh, why don't I just bite the bullet and publish it? So I ended up publishing two volumes of mm. poetry. That's a but lot. They also include, they, they do, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, they also include lyrics of my songs, and I've thrown in a couple of stories, essays as well. Um, you know, so they're a bit of a mixture, but the bulk of the of the, the publications are are my poem, my poems. <laughs> okay, so is are those available online? They certainly are. They're available on Amazon, uh, bookshop.org, which is the online website for your local bookstore. So you can get them because they're print on demand, you know. Okay. And what, what is the name of the books? What are the names? Sunsets and Kites. That's the first one. And the second one is Home is Where I Hang My Pot. Both of those you I just did. decided to, to put into books <laughs> because you're... Yes, tour I just was on pause. I went through my, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I had amazing. a one hour solo show all lined up, you know, which mm. was a mixture of poems and songs, you know, um, which I've been doing shows like that for the past few years. But this one was going to be just me. Um, the, the, the last two shows that I've toured have been me plus Shakespeare, my man, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes if you if you're not a fan of Shakespeare then something is wrong with you because if you're not that, a fan of Shakespeare yeah. come to me and I will convert you <laughs> that's an even better promotion there there you go do you yeah. do just the plays or do you read his sonnets as well in your shows one of my shows takes the form of a an elderly Shakespearean actress come scholar who is doing a world tour talking about Shakespeare's sonnets. So the show is she's exhausted, wakes up, sees the audience there and goes, oh, oh my God, I'm supposed to be giving you a lecture. So she chats with them, <laughs> but she gives them the lecture on the sonnets at the same time. So it is actually, you know, it's on how to perform Shakespeare's sonnets. That sounds like a fantastic show. Do, do you have them it's on a fun YouTube show. or are, are, they, are there any recordings? Uh, anywhere? I do, I, I, th I, think, I think I've got the version, the performance that I did in London. I think that may be on YouTube on my YouTube channel. I'll check that out for you. But my YouTube channel is under the name of Floyd with two L's. That's what, that's how I knew to say with two L's because I saw your YouTube channel. You're, you were reading, um, what was the play? 
or the, there was a, a story or a poem and I, I but it was it was just fantastic walnuts walnuts oh yes yeah. yes and, and just your your That's delivery young writer, like, this is fantastic say again oh thank you so much beautiful writing isn't that a beautiful monologue yeah, yeah. It, was, it was i didn't write it just your delivery was was phenomenal you know the the way you just laid it out there it was just captivating i was like this is just amazing so when you're when you're writing do you have something that generally inspires you or you know is there a particular time of day or mood that you're in when you start writing or what is it that inspires you to jump into writing well i'm i'm not someone who can write to order um, I can force myself and something usually comes out of it, but I find what works best for me is I'm, just something just occurs to me, a phrase. It might be a phrase. It might be um, occasionally it'll be a challenge, you know, uh, like, for instance, when I was doing the, the show about Shakespeare's sonnets, I thought, I want to write a sonnet. And I just started um, most mornings at the buzzing of my phone as magpies drink the early morning light. And then I had my two, my two first lines. And so then, you know, then I worked on it to actually turn it into a sonnet. But being me, it didn't stay for us being a sonnet right through to the very end. Um, I probably do it for you. I hope I can remember it, but I, I should have it handy somewhere just, just in case. I call it my sonnet, or is it? Most mornings at the buzzing of my phone, as magpies drink the early morning light, I wake to find my flesh, my skin, my bones reluctant to escape the dreaming night. I like to be reminded in good time that I exist that I am really here, all present and correct in form and mind, not just a figment or a shadow in the rear view mirror, speeding from the avalanche of years, expanding backwards, rear-ending me into the cavern of, of years collapsing. And I, hold on a minute, there's no sonnet. Asked an angry old lady ranting. And I will write more, and I will rant and roar some more. But I've been here before, and it was real. And realizing that is no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice! Very, very nice. <laughs> it's it, you. You just get caught yes. up in it, you know just watching yeah. <laughs> and, and hearing the the ebbs and flows is very nice and you it, you Thank just you. you just popped into it it's like i'm always ready <laughs> the, the the true well, side of a of an actress thespian performer ready on the go that was that was fantastic i wish I could just recite any of my poems like that, but I find learning <laughs> is mm. getting more of a challenge all the time. So I'm reading more and more these yeah, days. Yeah, well, even, even in the reading, I, I used to do prose poetry competitions back in high school. And, you know, even just mm -hmm. reading the script, you know, you've read it so many times, you, you're familiar with, with most of it, but you want to just make sure that you get the oh, dialogue yeah. and the words properly i mean you you can't be as animated you know with the script in hand and with the the, the poem in hand yeah. but there's still the words the delivery takes people on a journey just in itself so yeah so even yeah. even without the the yeah. video just hearing you and listening to you i was on a ride and it was it was wonderful so i'm going to be quiet and turn the floor over to you and let you share some more of your work, if you have some. Okay, I well, I do, as it happens. Um, I think I'm going to 
share with you some of the more recent ones. Some of them are in the, the books and I've got a couple that are that I haven't published yet. I I quite like this one. I mean, I love my science. I'm not a scientist. I don't understand a lot of it, but I keep trying. So this is called And Still I Grow. I am a fractal. I grow and I divide. I am an algorithm, infinitely reflecting infinite refractions. I am a triangle holding up the ceiling. The ceiling is holding up the roof. The roof is holding up the sky. The sky is holding up the universe. How strong is the sky to hold up the universe? The universe, and I'm quoting here, holds up the power of maths to describe the complexity of the world. That's Carlo Ravelli. But maths is exclusive, a language I have never learned beyond its tantalizing edges. Is there another way? a process that can provide the key to understanding how and if, and if not, why not? Is there a loosely structured system to decipher and describe the mysteries of life one complex layer at a time? A language free from dogma free from the bonds of uncertainty that yet adheres to the constraints of probability while maintaining at its heart at least the illusion of functionality. I do believe there is. I call it art. <laughs> that so art is the explainer of the complexities of math. It's, it, it's the explainer of everything because art is what makes us look at things mm. that we think we know in a different way. And therefore we learn more about them. That's, that's how I feel about art. It has to have a function. You know, I'm not into art for art's sake. I think all art has to reveal something in some way. Yeah, I, I agree. It, there's a complexity to it, you know, it, and it's like the two worlds. You have the sciences and then you have the arts. Yeah. But even in art, you know, and, and even in nature, which is art to the, the, the most perfect, in the most perfect form, you yeah. see math, the Fibonacci sequence. You yeah. know, you see the symmetry, yeah. you know, a lot of the, the human body and the makeup of the human body. Oh. Someone's calling in to buy a book. Someone's calling me from Glasgow. <laughs> what is that about? Oh, yeah, I'll turn the sound off. <laughs> yeah, so even even yeah. just looking at the human body and the, like the eyes and the, the brain structure and everything, yeah. In comparison to nature, you see the art in, in, in the, the mathematic sequences there. So yes. I, I, I like that. You know, art explains the complexities and it explains everything. You know, yes. there's a connection in all of it. Yeah, yeah. And it just does it in a very, in a different way than the way mathematics does. But, but they're so intertwined, really. You know, science yeah. and art, I think, are, yeah. You can't have one without the other. I'll take art over science and math though. <laughs> <laughs> it, it speaks to me a little more. It connects well, and it. resonates with me. Yeah. yeah. We want we want the one that opens the door to us. <laughs> yeah. And then you could take just the one poem, one story, one movie, one painting, and have a hundred people listen, look at, you know, and analyze, and everyone yeah. will get something different. There might be some some similarities, but there'll be a difference in there. And that is yeah. just fascinating. It's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. It's a beautiful world. We've got another one. Okay, here mm. we go. Not a word of a lie. What to say? Who to say it to? Why say it? When to say it? Where? 
Oh, yes, that's right. There is no where there. It's all here, dear. The message is clear, dear. Where you are is there now. Well, then, when? Oh, I asked that before. Oh, I guess the raven understood the score. Because if not now, or even then, all that's left is nevermore. <laughs> there is a thread, a fine and fragile thread that holds my heart, connects it to a chamber in my skull. In my heart, there is a chamber, a sweet room with walls of softness. There was a moment when I thought this could go on forever. And then I thought I'd cry. And then I thought, what good would that do? So I didn't do that. Who said what and why wouldn't you? Has anything been done about it? Is this too fast for you? Too many questions? Never stop asking questions. When you stop asking questions, it's because you think you know all the answers. I could write a book at this rate, full of nothing, the book of nothing. I'd call it post-apocalyptic me, a creation myth at the end of the rainbow, or even the end of the pandemic, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> when will we get there? <laughs> when will we get there? Yes. Not until long after we think we've already got there, sadly, but there you go. Um, I've got a, 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 a series, I wrote these four. Now you were asking about uh, inspiration and I have, uh, I, I've got two screens at the moment. So my eyes are such that I can't read what's on the tiny screen of my laptop. So I've got my TV hooked up where I can make the print big, but it means I've got two lots of screensavers. So quite often I'm working on the big screen and my screensaver is throwing me up photos from my photo, you know, uh, photos in, in, in the computer. Mm -hmm. And there's one that kept coming up, which was a photo of myself holding my firstborn son when he was about three weeks old. Oh no, it's his, my mother-in-law was, was holding him. And I kept seeing it and, and, and thinking, I want my baby back. I mean, he's, he's about to turn 50, but I want my baby back. So I wrote this. This was the first one of four screensaver poems. Firstborn son with paternal grandmother. Pixels flicker on the screen, focus, to reveal the baby curled at ease, confident within the soft curve of your grandmother's arms eyes tentatively absorbing the warmth of a late autumnal sky, lips apart to greet the taste of your sweet breath, flooding deeply to feed the blood that fires your will, your playful spirit warming your, the muscles that will engage you in games of comradeship and challenges of study that take you halfway around the world where you will love and grow your own babies imprinting your curiosities within their sturdy individualities, supporting their burnishing ambitions as you strive to clear the way through hazardous times that they may thrive and grow as you have done into maturity, your once golden hair speckled with gray behind the spectacles, distinguishing the care and precision you bring to everything you touch, extending yourself to accomplish with patience the life you've earned till now. And oh, how I long to hold my baby still. That, that maternal instinct sleek. Yeah, you never, it never, never goes away. <laughs> yeah, never. <laughs> ever yeah so you, like even now I'm, I'm 40 years old and mm -hmm. my mom still has that she still sees me as as a child you yes. know i'm i'm six foot four she's like five two maybe five yeah. three <laughs> and, yeah. 
if I go home, it's like, oh, sit on my lap. It's like, mom, stop. <laughs> Oh no, I yeah. don't. I'm not that kind of a mother. <laughs> yeah. So it's but no. that, just yeah. seeing being able to see the whole life, even just in that moment, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I see how you you've grown and I've up and I'm in admiration of you, and you're still just a baby. And yes. I see someone else holding you, and yeah. I know they're close to you and they love you, but uh-huh. you're mine. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's like don't leave me like I'm, I'm yeah. not going anywhere I'm here yeah. yeah 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 and so that was just sparked from a picture that was sparked from a picture so then I thought well that's son number one I better write one for son number two <laughs> now, my, my second son has just married a couple of years now and mm. his his daughter was just born last year and the photo that keep scrolling up on my screen is of him with the baby in the carry thingy uh, bringing her home from the hospital and he's walking through the corridor of the hospital with this it's the car seat thing yeah yeah second son with his newborn daughter a stranger holds the camera as you walk with quiet pride down the hospital corridor towards your new life as a father Clasping the carrier handle away from your body, Mandalorian-like, ushering out into the world the tiny person who holds the secret power of your genes within each cell in her body, and she will bless you, challenge you, fight you, define you, as you and your brother have done to me. (laughs) get ready <laughs> and then, yeah and then, get ready. Dot, 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 get ready be ready be yes ready. yeah she's only she's nine months old and he's already getting you know full force of that mm. <laughs> she's yeah. a little tiger yeah the firecracker that that terrible twos is no joke and if she's starting yeah. at nine months yeah you know, she's i mean she's probably going to be a creative person if she's just exploring oh, yeah. already into stuff Oh, absolutely. Yes, you can see it. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the mind is like, okay, what do I do with all of, all of these thoughts, all of this energy? What yes. do I, you know, channel it? Hey, uh-huh. Let me mess with this. <laughs> yes. It's so lovely to watch. So lovely. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, I'm just grandma. I don't have to worry about it anymore. I get to admire from a distance. Exactly. You know, yes. Yeah. I get to sit there saying, no, don't give it that. That's dangerous. And they get mom. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah I think that that's one of the most beautiful beautiful things you know having kids and watching them grow and grow up and then seeing them as adults knowing whew, all right they're not they're not crazy they're not in prison they're not criminals you know <laughs> yes I, I did I did okay <laughs> yeah yeah I did okay. made it this far yeah 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 and then they have their own and it's like the cycle mm. continues yeah 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 so is, is that your only only grand grandchild? Uh no. I've got uh, my 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 son, my old eldest son is two. And one of them is about to turn 15. How dare he? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where did all the years go? Okay. Where did the I know? Gosh, 15. He's such a delightful young man. He really is a young man already at 15, you know. Lovely. Um, are are they there in Liverpool as well, or are they in a different? No, place? they he he went to the states to study um, mm. when he uh, not long after he left, uh, he got his first degree here, and then he went over to study and met this delightful girl, and then come back. <laughs> <laughs> so they live in Seattle um, with the two kids, you know, and the, the similar just- weather. Very similar, yes. It's really interesting when, you know, when we do our Skype calls, um, you know, they'll be saying, oh, well, it's raining. Yeah, raining here, you know. Well, we had a bit of sunshine. Yeah, a bit of sunshine. Yeah, <laughs> it's very similar. Yeah, I, I used to live in that area, in the Seattle area, just north of Seattle, in uh, uh, what was it? Linwood, which is uh-huh. like 30 minutes north. And you all would right. go through all four seasons <laughs> within a yeah. day. Rain, yeah. sun, snow, and, uh-huh. and it just wind. It would just be crazy. But it's beautiful. There's a lot of greenery. Yeah. 
up there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it really yeah. is. This is, I wrote this, I started writing it the day before your last most recent election results were to be announced when everybody, we were all, everyone was holding their breath. Yeah. No? Yeah. It was a very scary time. And oh, we goodness. had rain, yeah. like we had one of those rain events where the rain didn't just sprinkle down, it came down in bucket loads, you know. And I'm sitting here at this desk and I looked at the window and I thought, the window is weeping. It was, you know, and so this is, I've turned it into a song. I'm not going to sing it. I'm going to recite it for you. <laughs> it's called The Day Before. The window is weeping. Tears of rage are falling down, drowning out the songs, the songs we sang before. The wind is sweeping through leaves that will not fall but hold on fast to make it last, to last the way it was before. The dark is creeping, slowly draining hope and patience, leaving no place for perseverance, values held before. The sun is peeping high above, beyond the storm, waiting for the earth to turn, to face the myth that was before. This time is reaping what we sowed. And now we know, we know we owe it to ourselves to own what went before. The future's keeping all our dreams of better days to give us time to change our ways, time to leave what was before. The earth's housekeeping bill is due. P payment in lieu will not restore what she's been through. All the damage done before. The day is sleeping. Calmly breathing through the storm. Waiting for whatever lies. Whatever lies in store. <laughs> yeah yeah that, that that one was intense yeah yeah i had, had a lot of time to think about it yeah. and and gradually you know as as january passed and february and march and it became obvious that we had more things to worry about than one election result you know so yeah sometimes <laughs> Yeah, the um, the rage uh, will will burst out in a in a poem. <laughs> yeah. Has to go somewhere. Beautifully written, you know, the future and the nature. <laughs> those two those two hit hard. You know, keeping keeping tabs on what we're doing, keeping our mm -hmm. dreams, and just like there's there's better waiting for you. Yeah, but it all depends on what you do now. Yeah, your present, our actions, the things that we've done now are yeah. so critical mm -hmm. to the progress that is available yes. in the future. And it's up to us whether or not we squander it or capitalize on it and do what yeah. needs to be done. And yeah. the fact that, you know, that the earth, Mother Earth is just like, why are you doing this to me? I've taken care of you. I've provided for you and you're destroying me. You're killing me. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, ah, oh, man. Yeah. And, and, and also, she will survive. We'll be the ones that don't survive. Mm. The earth will go on. Because even if, even if the earth has to press the reset button, you know, yeah. it yeah. has a way of bouncing back. Humans are, are. Absolutely. Yeah, but we don't. Yeah. 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 We're, we're not think, we're not immortal. Th no, we're not. No. <laughs> and we've been denying that fact for so long, but it's so interesting, yeah. isn't it? I was just thinking, 
you know, as we're talking that, you know, like five, six, seven hundred years ago, uh, even uh, Europeans, you know, with having lost connection uh, to some extent with, with the earth, um, were still pretty much aware that, that they were responsible for the land that they tilled and they had to regenerate it and they had to look after it and they, you know, um, but it's just like, you know, basically leading up to and then industrialization has sort of allowed certainly the Western world to get this mindset that they can just take, take, take. It's bizarre. And frustrating. <laughs> it's <just> bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> and very frustrating, yeah. It's like, how yeah. much is enough? How much? Yeah. The, the greed, the yeah. entitlement. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. It's. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I, I watched a, a movie called Lucy um, like two days ago. Uh huh. And in it, Morgan Freeman was, he was giving a lecture about evolution. And he was saying that organisms have two paths. They look at the environment, and if the environment is harsh, they seek the path of, of immortality. But if the environment is pleasant, they seek the path of reproduction. So wow. they, they live out their life, and they, they look to reproduce so uh -huh. that their offspring can enjoy the, the lavishness of, of that life. And so, like you were saying, that the humans won't survive if we continue down this path of destruction and take, 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 take. Yeah. But Mother Nature will seek the path of immortality if mm. we do not take care of her. And so yeah. she gets rid of the problem, which yes. would be us. Yes. <laughs> and then creates a lavish life so that everything that's left behind can be reproduced. And it will begin to reproduce yeah. until it becomes a utopia again. So, yeah, yeah. Until the sun burns out and then it's. Yeah. It's, it's going to back back to the stars, basically. Yeah. You know? And begin again. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that, <laughs> that was that was that was so powerful. Oh my goodness gracious. That was oh my really, really powerful. I thank you oh, for that. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I definitely thank you for coming on to the show one more time for the viewers. Can you give us the name of your books and where they can find them? Okay, the books are called Sunsets and Kites and Home is Where I Hang My Pot and you'll find them if you go to amazon.com or .co.uk or wherever, whatever Amazon is, is, is your local one. Um, if you search for Floyd Kennedy, but you have to spell Floyd with two L's or you'll never find me um, and, uh, and, and the books will come up there. Um, you can also probably, I know you can get them through Waterstones, you can get them through Barnes and Noble. You just have to order them and they'll, 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 they'll send, you know, they, they get printed and back within a couple of days, you know. So, um, or, or I tell you what, you can go to my website, which is floydkennedy.com, as long as you spell yeah. Floyd with two L's. <laughs> Remember, Floyd with two L's. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, can I mention the podcast, Justice? Yes, please, please. Because I have this new podcast, which I started up about uh, six weeks ago. It's called Am I Old Yet? Question <laughs> mark. And it came out of the fact that I was just saying to somebody one day, sort of, you know, well, I'm old anyway, blah, blah, blah. And they're saying, oh, you're not old. You're not old. And I'm like, hang on a sec. If I'm not old at my age, when am I? What is old, you know? And so, and, and I wrote this short sketch, a 10 minute sketch about this woman who is my age, um, having this argument with her daughter, who's saying, no, mom, you're not old. And she says, well, what am I? I'm not young, I'm not middle-aged. I want a word that I can use. And old doesn't have to mean decrepit or dying, you know? So that went down quite well. And, and so I've ended up, I'm now up to episode 11. <laughs> and it's the same character having these arguments and whatever with her daughter, with her granddaughter, 
with her friends, you know, just um, talking about her, her life and uh, people are finding them amusing. So that makes me very happy. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> yes, that's it. It's the podcast. It's really a serial that just goes on and on. You know, it's, it's a soap opera. Am I old yet? That's a, that's a good question. <laughs> I'm not old. I'm seasoned. Yes. I'm experienced. All the beautiful yeah. euphemisms out there. All these, all these <laughs> euphemisms, you know. You could say I'm mature, but then I don't always behave in a mature way. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the, that's the enjoying life aspect. Absolutely. So, and as long yeah. as you're enjoying life, you mm -hmm. are young at heart. So. Oh, yeah. I can be young Michelle, at heart. Yeah, yeah, the shell may may age, but the, the spirit remains youthful. Well, and it does. You ask anybody of any age, and they'll tell you exactly that. You know, we never feel the age we are, no matter what age it is. You know, when you're five, you don't feel five. <laughs> you don't think about it. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be reminded of it. You have to be told. Reminded, you see a picture, yeah. but, oh, okay, I'm young. I'm old. Yeah. You know. Yeah, but when you're five, you want to be six, you know, you're always trying to get somewhere yeah. further. Um, and I I went through those those years of going, oh no, not another year. No, don't tell anyone how old I am. And then I reached a point of thinking, hang on a minute, I like this. I quite like being this age. Yeah. You know? Okay, so there's another one. <laughs> Boom, it's gone. <laughs> Embrace it. Yeah, the yes, younger you exactly. are, you typically look more towards the future the older you are you typically look more towards the past until you get to the point like you said where you're just okay with the here and now so, okay. this is who i am and you embrace that and live in that moment in the moment yeah very good well, i try <laughs> <laughs> that's all we can do that's all we can do is just give it our best no i was just going to say thank you much for me on and and this opportunity to share some of my posts which which i love to do love to share well i definitely appreciate you coming on it was fantastic so many different stories and, and poems that all have different messages but all were just fantastic in their in their own right and it was captivating so Okay. Thank you once again, Floyd with two L's <laughs> for coming My on. My pleasure. Thanks, Thanks Justice. Bye-bye. You stay, take care and stay safe. Thank you. You too. All right, everybody. Thank you guys for joining. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Stay tuned for new episodes of Prose Poetry Pit Stop come out every Saturday. Remember, you only have one life to live. Make sure you do it justice. Take a break and listen to the stories and poems written by people just like you. Prose Poetry Pit Stop. Recharge your day and do your life justice. Tune in for a new episode every Saturday.